Hi guys, we are back. Today we're going to do our next installment of our sample board series. Uh, today we're going to be doing one of our very, very simple uh, white marble techniques. Uh, we call it a brush vein. And uh, this, this seems to be very, very popular with a, a little bit older clientele. They get a little bit scared of anything too bold. Uh, so this is going to be a very subtle type of veining and a very subtle type of marbleization. It's super fast, super quick. So pay attention and uh, we'll show you how. So we just have some of our, our uh, counterintelligence white epoxy, and we're just gonna dump that out right in the middle of the board. I'm not gonna scrape out the cup because I wanna leave a little bit in the cup, and I'll show you why here in just a minute. Okay, so I'm just gonna use my hand. I'm gonna spread this out. Once again, I've got approximately three ounces per square foot. That's kind of your go-to number for almost every technique that we do. Three ounces a square foot is just always a safe starting number. Some techniques require more, but just about every technique requires at least three. So with my hand, I'm not trying to make it perfect. The epoxy is gonna uh, self-level quite a bit. I'm just trying to get it spread out relatively even fashion, making sure all my corners are covered, all my faces are covered. So as that epoxy starts to level out and flow, it flows evenly and we don't get dry spots. Okay. I'm gonna quickly wipe off my hand here. Doesn't need to be perfect, but if you take just a second, it's gonna help you not just destroy all of your tools and your spray cans and all that. So for this technique here, usually with white, you can use the darker colors if you want to, but most people really like this technique for its subtleness. So I like to use our lightest gray that we have, which is just our silver metallic. So then I'm gonna take the stick and I'm just going to lay out a little bit of a vein. I'm gonna step off of this one, kind of take it out that way. Okay, then I'm going to just put a few drops here and there. Okay, that's probably gonna be enough color. I know it doesn't look like a lot, but with white, uh, you don't need a lot of color. Um, so what we're going to do, the reason why we left the white in the bucket is because for this technique, you need a brush. This is just a cheap brush. I actually prefer to use a two inch brush, but I didn't have any two inch brushes here in the shop today. So I have a three inch brush, but for this technique to work properly, you really need to saturate this good with your main color. So we're going to just jam this brush and get it coated really, really well with white epoxy. We want to get it in between the bristles good. What this is going to do is allow your first brush stroke and your last brush stroke to look the same. If you hit this with a dry brush at the beginning, it's going to pick up so much of the epoxy, it's, it's just going to change the way it looks. So we're going to come in here. The, the, really the trick to this technique is being aggressive with the brush. You can't be really slow or, or tentative with the brush. Now, if you're doing a sample board like this, this is small, the aggressiveness that you need with this brush is probably gonna move your board. So I'll just like to hook it with my finger, but I wanna be firm and aggressive with these strokes. Now I can always come back in here and add more color if, if I take away more than I want, but I can't take it back out. So I always start light. And then I could come back and add more if I want to. So that's looking pretty good. I think I'd like just a little bit more color right there. Now on video, you may say, man, I don't see any color, but I promise you in person, 
There's some very nice, just low key, subtle uh, marbleization going on here. Now, if you take that brush and you go slow with the brush or you're not aggressive enough with it, you just won't get the movement that you need um, for this to actually look right in the effect. So I'm going to show you one little add on that you can do. Now you can put as much color in this as you want. Um, you can make this really consistent all the way across. Like you want the whole board to look like this little area right here does. You, you can certainly do that and just add more of the silver, do your brush technique and you'd be good. Uh, maybe you decided you want a few more of the light spots out here. Just put a few more drops, rebrush it. You'll get exactly what you're looking for. So, I do want to show you there is a, a little add-on that you can do to this technique. It does make it a little bit more bold, so it may not be everyone's flavor, but it is something that you can do with this technique. So I just want to show it to you. So you take, this is our uh, chrome spray paint. So when we get the, the paint stick coated, the, the wood really draws in this type of paint pretty good. So I'm gonna let it dry for just a second. Then I'm going to put, put another coat on there until it's nice and shiny. Smack it off. I really don't want much paint at all on here. So I'm just going to come in and put a little bit of this paint in some of these lines. It's just a touch of it out there. Okay. So now I wipe off any epoxy that was on there. I'm not going to get the brush back out because if I get the brush out, it's really going to bury that paint. I'm just going to take a stick and, and just kind of try to keep that paint from, from globbing back up and just work it in the same direction, the same fashion that I worked the brush. And this is going to be a subtle little addition that you can do to these. It's just going to make it pop a little bit. Now, some of these tech, some of these effects and techniques, they don't show real good on on pictures or on the camera. But this technique here, when this is done in person, as you walk around by adding this little bit of chrome spray paint, it's gonna it's gonna have a different type of reflection just in those areas. Now, I do recommend if you do this on this type of of um, technique that you don't do too much. You want to keep this very light, very subtle. It's just going to add a little bit more flavor. I think we need to do just a little bit more. I buried a lot of that. Like I said, you can always add more, but you can't take it back out once it's in. Okay, all right. So now that we've got that little bit of, of addition to this technique, uh, all that's left to do is hit it with a little bit of isopropyl and then we are good to go. So once again, we're barely hitting the trigger so you get a good variation of our droplet size. And like always, I'm gonna spray it in the direction that my veins are in. So, Chris, if you can show everywhere that you see that's a darker spot, that's that little bit of spray paint that I added, these really hard lines. The lines that are much more muted, that's the silver metallic that's down in it. But everything that's, that's like a really hard, dark spot, that's that little bit of spray paint that I added. And all that's gonna do is give you a really cool reflection as you walk around once this piece is done. So for this particular technique, definitely less is more. If you are going to add your accent paint, you don't want to do too much. Uh, but at this point, that's all it takes to get this technique down. Once again, this is, uh, this is a very simple white marble. This mimics like a Calcutta Ivy, which is extremely popular quartz color right now. Um, so I think you'll see that a lot of your clientele really likes this just very simple classic look. Um, so we'll see you tomorrow.